apology. I am going to leave at five o'clock. I've got something else I need to go to. So if I okay. when I silently disappear, you know where I've gone. Okay. Yeah, same with me. Uh, went the on same record. Time I, yeah. That went on record. Okay. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, uh, the recording is on, and uh, we have an agenda for today. Uh, I could uh, share that uh, if it is useful, any use. Uh, uh, where is it? Or do you want to share it yourself, Loa? No, no, do you share it. Okay, I'm working on that. Okay. Uh, so our agenda is, uh, you can lead to it from week 18. We are at week 18 and um, this is agenda, today's agenda. Uh, we will have our first weekly, this is our first weekly meeting after IETF 111. Uh, we are still working on the agenda. Okay, actually, I think we did finalize it now. I actually did the last touch to it just before the meeting. So, yeah. Okay. Um, the first item is uh, we, the, the chairs met, uh, the chairs from uh, PALS and MPLS and uh, met, and we wanted to, uh, you know, uh, give a title for the project. So we thought of, uh, you know, proposing MPLS indicators and auxiliary data, uh, MIAD. M A M I A D. Um, so, so that we know what we're talking about. If uh, outside of uh, MPLS design team, it's the uh, the MIAD project. Um, any uh, comments or feedback? Uh, one one comment is that we actually there is a hidden de decision here. We are not no longer talking about. Uh, metadata or anything else we are talking about auxiliary data so that goes with this decision well i think the ancillary data includes metadata um we're not ah okay then you need to write it down because i don't understand that um i also understood it the way kiriti did is auxiliary uh, metadata or ioam ioam data is auxiliary data ah okay yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So, so what's the relationship between ancillary data and NPOS extension headers? Uh, the extension header would carry the ancillary data. It's a solution. Yeah. The way I look at it, the, it's a solution for carrying auxiliary data. It's a candidate solution. A candidate. Yeah. But I, I have some uh, discussion uh, with Charlie's. Uh, there's not only uh, auxiliary data, right? Not only data, but there's also instructions and uh, combined together, they are header. So yeah. only talk about uh, auxiliary data. Is it? No, no. Is it... There is instructions here, or in, we call them indicators. You, you're calling them instructions. An uh, indicator is something uh, maybe in the label stack <laughs> is the label, right? But uh, after that, you have instruction plus data. We did, we're not you, saying you, that For example, if you do the IOM, there's not only IOM data, there's also the IOM header um, contains so, tell you what data to collect. So, so I still think Neumann we need has to... We well, Norman has already told us that you can yes. carry data instructions in data, so I don't think there's a dichotomy there. Yeah, I, I kind of, again, I'm agreeing with Kariti. I, mean, I think the important thing is that we need a term for the block of stuff or junk or whatever it is that sits between the end, the, between the bottom of stack and the payload. Um, so we need one term for it just to 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 give it a name. Um, ancillary data seems a sort of um, term. Metadata, I don't think is right. Um, uh, I think instructions would be included in all of this ancillary data. The ancillary data is uh, essentially assistance in the forwarding process. So uh, that, that assistance can be additional instructions or it can be parameters to those instructions. I agree. 
the one thing that we might want to be careful about is um, what do we talk, how do we talk about data that goes in the label set? So the indicator, are you are you thinking that the indicator includes the associated data for that? Or is the indicator just, I've got an entropy somewhere. Uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, go ahead. I suppose ancillary data could be ancillary data in the stack itself. Yes, yes. I was going to say the no, same. After, after, yeah, yeah. I think, yes, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, I mean, there is an, an implicit assumption made that ancillary data is only after bottom stack, and I don't think that is, that is. No, uh, that ancillary is. data is where it, where it makes sense for the application to put it. Correct. I, I was brought a up a question about uh, uh, data in the label stack and um, if that's uh, the particular bit that corresponds to the bottom stack, uh, it happens to be one, would, would that cause the folding by it? Or sorry, that, sorry, sorry. that uh, ancillary data must not have, if it's in the stack, then it must not have that uh, BOS bits uh, uh, that. You, you are not allowed to subsume the BOS bit into your data. The BOS bit has to be uh, only exactly. used for that purpose. Uh, otherwise, you can't parse this thing. Yeah. Okay. And maybe you may have missed so, it. Uh, we can uh, actually start a bit early. But, so, but data that's in the stack, uh, I think we have to have a higher sort of scrutiny. What do you put in the stack? What do you put after the stack? We can be a little more uh, lax about it. Uh, so the data that goes in the stack, one, you cannot use the BOS, BOS bit. It must retain its uh, current purpose. And two, we're going to have higher standards of what data is allowed to go in the stack. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Loa. Uh, actually, we. Yeah, I think under uh, uh, agenda item four, we have uh, we actually have that uh, what you're saying just now actually noted down in a maybe more primitive fashion, but uh, it's, it's all there. Okay, good. Yeah, and, and we're going to start writing some of this down in formal documents, aren't we? And I think when, when we write it down in formal documents with the context around it, then we'll be in a better position to judge whether we've got it right or need to tune it. Yeah. Okay. But uh, actually, what is called text on ancillary data is a start on that. Uh, which text is this, Laura? I, if you uh, go to, you have the agenda, go to bullet number five, uh, number four. Yeah. There is text on ancillary data. I put it in there uh, earlier today. Okay. So click on it and you see it. I am. Uh, I clicked. Okay. All right. Uh, okay. Is this the, the the text we reviewed in the past? Uh, no, this is not reviewed. This is for discussion. Okay. All right. Uh... uh okay. So uh, the the tentative uh, title. Uh, it, it, there's no uh, uh, reject and no, there's no uh, pushback on that. It's acceptable by the team. I'm hearing not, not considerable. Yeah, no, I'm okay with rejection. it. I think we, we might have to, you know, put an asset and make sure that everyone understands what we mean by auxiliary data. But other yeah. than that, I think we're good. Okay. All right. Uh, last we, a week or last time we met as a design team, uh, we reviewed uh, text um, and comments. We reviewed text that uh, was uh, specific to the, 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 the in label indicators or or how do we indicate uh, that data is present in uh, an MPLS packet. Um, so I can point you to that with this uh, text for editing here. I think uh, we reviewed it all last time. Uh, the question here, I think Loa is trying to ask is, do we have any comments uh, from- uh, Actually, uh, I give to, there are comments on the mailing list. Uh, I'm going to organize them uh, for the next meeting. Uh, and if you have more comments, 
on that text, please send them in now so we actually get them included in in that discussion that we think. I intend to have next week. There are uh, some suggestions for changes that I think is good. There are other suggestions that I think. So, do you want me to take action items on you? Uh, let me. Uh, let me. Depend, what you, depend on who you write the action item. But uh, yeah, I, I will kind of prepare a discussion for next week. On but that's what you, you you're proposing, right? Uh, action yeah. item on four, right? Okay. Prepare what? A, a discussion on the comments on the consensus text for indicators. Are you writing Are you? somewhere? Ah, yeah, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong place. Okay. Yeah, I took an action item on you by next week. Yeah. Uh, and what I will do is actually go through all the comments, suggest the response to them, and actually, if I think it's okay, changes to the text. All right. Uh, any other comments on number two that you want to uh, raise now today, or you can uh, also uh, punt it till next week when the discussion happens next week. Or send a mailing list. Yeah, or saying, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the question is to the, to the team attending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you, you're free to raise it now or send it to the list. Okay, um, I'll move on to the third item on the agenda. Uh, we have uh, use cases. Uh, let me flip to it quickly. Uh, where is it? Uh, I can find it now. We have a wiki that we started to compose. Uh, Kiran, myself, and others have helped by you as well. Uh, we documented use cases. Uh, we went through some of it. Um, the proposed use cases were IOM, network slicing, time sensitive networking, and uh, SFC and segment routing. I, I'm not sure about segment routing with SRH, but network programming was one. So there were a couple of use cases, I, potential use cases identified. And uh, you know, uh, our, our objective was to derive requirements from these use cases. Um, we haven't edited much this from last time we did um, the major edit to this page. Um, but um, like I mentioned, uh, uh, the objective of this uh, page is that it's useful uh, to point uh, to existing documents that describe the use cases. And, um, and eventually we want to derive the requirements on MP MPLS data plane. Uh, for each of those use cases. Um, so I, uh, from my side, um, going back to the agenda, um, I was put to talk about the status report uh, on use cases. I mean, like I mentioned, the use cases um, wiki, we did not update it since last time we did the revamp on it. We plan to add more edits to it, but uh, you know, go through it and let you know. This is an uh, an invitation for the whole team is to contribute as well. Uh, any comments on the use cases or how we should approach it? Tarek, when you say contribute, do you mean to uh, just update a, a wiki page or um, initiate discussions on the mailing list? Uh, so, um, I have a concern that I pointed out to the chairs before uh, is that we do not want to rewrite, uh, you know, um, use case documents that or, you know, or some of them might have already been written in other working groups. So, the reason as much as possible, if you know of a use case that uh, is applicable to MPLS data plane um, for the discussion of uh, MIAD, then we need to document it here uh, and maybe have references at, to, uh, 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 on it. And you can definitely update the wiki and, uh, you know, free, feel free to engage on the mailing list as well. 
Okay. Okay. Oh, just so one, up. one particular comment I have here is that uh, the one use case is uh, the, the thing I have been working on the generic delivery function. Um, and to me, that actually could include the in situ OEM. Um, so, what I could do is that I can put in some text in the wiki and then point it out in the, in the mailing list and I invite people to comment on, on, on the uh, modification uh, I, I, I put there. Jeffrey, the way I would do it, because in a way, what you're saying is that's a candidate solution to carry this information. The use case that I would put is fragmentation. And the candidate solutions go somewhere else, and that candidate solution can carry information for fragmentation or for in situ OEM or both. Does that make sense? It uh, makes sense to me that, uh, you know, you talk about the the thing you're trying to solve uh, with exactly. GDF. What is it that you're trying to solve with GDF? Uh, so, yeah, I know that you have a solution, but but what is it solving? Is it solving the IOEM? Yes, then it goes under this category as a solution. But I think uh, maybe you proposed the GDF as a fragmentation mechanism. And, um, That's a different yeah. use case. So uh, the way I see it, uh, uh, you can have specific use cases like a, a in situ OEM or a fragmentation or ESP or whatever, but all those actually fit into a, a generic bucket that like a basic <laughs> generic delivery function because uh, those functions, whether it's a IOM or fragmentation or ESP or authentication header, any of those basically can be viewed as generic delivery function. So I can what I can do is I'll just put in the specific use cases like fragmentation. There right, initially right. I was thinking that I put in GDF uh, as a general bucket and through other specific use cases in, into that generic bucket, but I can just do the uh, specific use cases. Yeah. And I have a use case I want to add here, which is the NFFRR. I'll just you know have a quick bucket for that and point it to. Uh, to, to the draft that um, goes into more detail. But, okay, uh, I'm not I, it, uh, yeah, I'll I, leave it. You know, I, I can you. do that. Don't, yeah, I'll yeah. do it. But but I, I you know I understand what you're trying to say now. Um, uh, sorry, I flipped. Uh, uh, I uh, this is Jeffrey. I, I understand what you're trying to say about the uh, GDF. It's a generic delivery of multiple functions, and IOM can be one function. If you think this is generic uh, enough, uh, maybe it will be a separate use case. You know, uh, delivering multiple functions. Uh, yeah, I, um, I'm I'm open to that. If if uh, you want to add it as a use case, okay. generic okay. functions. Yeah. Okay. I'll 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 I'll, I'll put in the uh, my text and then I'll I'll you uh, I'll, I'll uh, 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 initiate discussion on the mailing list so that people know. About this uh, uh, change, and they they can uh, uh, comment on that. Uh, Jeffrey, uh, my understanding is that uh, generic delivery function is uh, not limited to MPOS, <laughs> and uh, you know if uh, if it's applied to MPOS, it, it's exactly what this um, working group trying to achieve, right? To support it in MPOS to support okay. this kind of. A, Multiple functions, so that's why I'm not sure uh, generic delivery function uh, is a use case here. Um, it's actually the the overall goal we want to achieve here. Yeah, that yeah, that's a goal, and so you use so, case. So, with, uh, right? Jeffrey, here's Jeff how I think about it. The use case is when you go to a customer and say. Hey, here's something you want to accomplish. Um, so um, that that's what for me a use case is. So if you tell someone you want to accomplish end-to-end uh, -end OM or hop by hop OM, or you want to get network slicing done, or you want fragmentation of your packets, those are things that uh, they would care about. How we do that, whether we encode it in the label stack or after the label stack, whether we use GDF or some other approach, is uh, for me different from a use case. A use case is some end thing that you want to achieve that the customer would like to see. 
Yeah, I think yeah. it's the same way. I think also from my point of view, the use case is more from a customer perspective, and then you might have different solutions to fulfill the use case. There might be even not a single solution, but maybe two or three different ones, technical ones. Okay, that's that 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 that's fine. Then I'll I'll just put this put the specific use case uh, there, like fragmentation and uh, like fragmentation. Yeah, okay. agreed. Yeah. Okay, I'll do that. Yeah. Okay, uh, going back to the agenda, I think, uh, um, so we have talked about the use cases. Uh, next, we do have um, a plan forward, start working in companion text ancillary data. So honestly, I haven't seen this until now. Um, no, admit. that's true, it's new. Uh, it's we new, have right? discussed it, we discussed it a bit in part in some of the shares meeting, but. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you go ahead and talk about it. I, I, I want to just do, do a walk, walk through on this document here, uh, and um, then uh, schedule a discussion uh, on the mailing list after this meeting and probably revisit next time. Um, so what I've done is, Let's see, I want to have a, a big text. Um, so I um, started by doing a couple of definitions. And um, that's the, the first spin. So I'd say that. Uh, we have as we have the term ancillary data to be used instead of, for example, metadata. Uh, in this text, so using auxiliary in the in the previous uh, title, uh, do you mind if we use auxiliary? Or I, I think we need to be consistent. That's my point. So you talking about the spelling? You want. No, they are two. They are two. Ancillary and auxiliary are two different terms, and I can't remember because I always get confused about very similar terms. I wrote uh, in one of the drafts I did. I explained why I thought it should be um, whichever the term it was, and, and I did this with reference to the Oxford English Dictionary. So okay. it's a fairly definitive source. Okay, but so but we, it's, it's, it's important that we get the right term because it, yeah. they mean something subtly and importantly different. Yeah, okay, so revisit that and tell me that term I want to use. I will tell you the term, yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, and I also uh, talked about encapsulation, and that relates to uh, things where uh, how big is the data? How, how do we actually <laughs> encode it and things like that? Uh, type of data. So, what I'm saying is that we have today three different types of ancillary data in my term. Uh, so one is implicit. The uh, the indicator is enough. Uh, the uh, node knows what to do based on the indicator and doesn't need anything more. And then we have in stack data. And after, and then we have after the um, bottom of that data. I don't think there is any more really uh, that we want to use. There is a fourth possibility, and that is actually to send the data uh, in the uh, packet payload. But I, I would like to exclude that one. It will be very messy. Um, we need to come up with rules for. Once you have the flag or the indicator, how do you find the ancillary data? Um, and going through them again, they are kind of, uh, kind of uh, implicit data is fine. You don't need to do much about that. Uh, in stack data, uh, we need to be very strict. Just that, that was the discussion I initiated. Uh, before the meeting started, and uh, Kiretis said pretty much the same as uh, uh, I say here, I think. 
uh, we need to be very strict what we actually put in the sack and we could be a little bit more relaxed what goes after the stack uh, there is one thing that I haven't really got my head around yet, and that is that if you have a gal or if you have an other indicator that say there is an ACH at after the uh, of the boss, that that spot in the uh, in the packet is occupied by the ACH, and you can't you can't change it without uh, changing too much in uh, the MPLS data plane, and I don't really know how, how to work around that, but I want to put it in here. The text is intended to be fleshed out, uh, shoot over, changed, and republished when we actually get to a consensus. But this is the starting point. And once we have the text finished, we will send it out to the working group for the same type of consensus quality we did on the indicators. That's all I have, I think. Uh, oh, okay. I, 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 did you cover all of it? Uh, I yeah, guess I you did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I was stuck on the first part. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. So you're saying that this is not final, and you will uh, you, you will uh, ref refine it and come back to it later. Is that? I will refine it as we get uh, new comments, and when I get new ideas, uh, some other thing can probably be removed, like the project name. I just needed it here because I was using the acronym uh, further down in the text. Okay. Um, okay. I guess, uh, yeah, I, uh, mm, okay. Um, so this is where we we will um, add text about auxiliary data or ancillary data. That's your intention of the wiki that you're coming uh, up with. This is, the wiki will probably be more discussion and more more fleshed out, but this is intending to put to create a text that the working group can say, yes, that is what we want. That is we have a rough consensus about it, and this is the way we will go. Okay. Good. It's not a law book, it's kind of a guidance. Mm -hmm. uh, probably should look at the fourth variant of um, actually data sent in the payload, but uh, I would be happy if we actually ex excluded it, so we don't want I that. Had, uh, we had four bullets in the previous re revision of, um, mm. I remember there were four, not three. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> oh, you're, you're already saying that the fourth, um, and, yeah. I, I think it, my my belief is that it should be excluded. It doesn't give you very much, and it could be very messy because it's it, it's if you put it in a place where the uh, one that actually controls the payload <clears throat> actually controls the ancillary data, and that is probably not good. I, I think you know adding it and then then discarding it is, is you know at least mentioning it and yeah then we can make a decision uh, a sound decision. So we're talking about application aware kind of uh, um, embedded in the packet, some some information that is application aware or uh, and then the router do decision based on the application data. Maybe, but I'm not. I'm not kind of convinced that it's a good idea in this case. I, it's not my idea. Um, it's somebody. <laughs> <is proposing. laughs> there is a whole buff there about application. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that is that's that's and a that's good, a good thing. I actually was yeah, pushing yeah. against it. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> for the record, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So that I I'm not also convinced about. Uh, but actually supporting the APN buff is not the same thing to, to say that you need <laughs> to have uh, the, the fourth option uh, in, in MPLS. 
Yeah. yeah so what yeah okay it's not a discussion about how we support apn but uh, mm -hmm. apn can be supported with a uh, uh with a with an uh, no you, you misunderstood me i'll tell you that if i uh, if i'm supporting the apn apn boss it doesn't necessarily follow that i want the fourth option here um okay yeah i mean APN is proposing to put uh, uh, to make the network aware about the application. That's what yeah. application networking is. So yeah, a, okay. a transit router will be aware about application data. So you, sure. you can, you're, free, you're free to support it. Uh, okay. But I, I think the the path from here is actually that people read this text. And then uh, comment on it, and uh, we start changing it and uh, kind of refine it. <clears throat> okay. Anything else you want uh, to add, or anyone from uh, from the audience wants to comment on this text? I don't know if it's this text, but I will continue to refine um, since since I'm talking about in stack data, I will continue to refine the criteria for when data should be in stack. So what, what uh, you know, the second bullet here, uh, we, we have talked about, you know, we should be strict about it. Uh, and so there's some criteria for what should go into it. I, I was going to do that anyway in an update to the FAI document. Um, I don't know if that data, uh, that, that text should be anywhere else. Um, the other place I was thinking of putting it is in the, we have a, a wiki page for Instack data. So I think I might put it there. The way the um, types of ancillary data is maybe a wrong description, right? So. When I read types, I think about the semantic of 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 this, but this is more about positioning, right? So I think maybe instead of types, we we say positioning. We have ten fifty three different positioning of ancillary data, implicit, in stack data after the boss. Yeah, I could live with that description. Is there a need for implicit uh, uh, category at all? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so we um, no no for the fast read out as an example. Exactly. Uh, and router alerts that we didn't. I mean, we have a full label for it, but but if we had done it differently. There would be a bit thing, send this to the router, but there wouldn't be any associated data. So that would be another implicit. It's just that those are the are the ancillary uh, data at all. It's more like the uh, 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 forwarding action in the indicator, right? Yeah, I get your point, but but um, I guess another way of saying it is that the there's an instruction without without associated data. Um, okay, e either way, um, there isn't. So I mean, you could say the first bullet is there is no uh, associated auxiliary data. The second is that the auxiliary data is in stack, and the third is that it's after stack, and the fourth that uh, we haven't really written out. Oh, like well, actually, the fourth one's it's in the payload. It's in the payload, yeah. And we we do somehow rather need to build that into the architecture because we we know we have that case. Sure, um, we can put it in, um, but uh, so so you're basically. Uh, I mean, if you want to call this types or positioning or whatever, um, one is there isn't any data. Two is we put it in the in the stack. Three is we put it after the stack, but before the payload. And four is you put it in the payload. Okay. I can pick <laughs> one more, but uh, maybe it's not so attractive. Is you exchange the auxiliary data and 
in the control plane but maybe nowadays is not that attractive so you have the, the indication in the packet, but the data is exchanged in the control plane in advance. Yeah, but yeah, maybe I don't have a use case. But for isn't that. it orthogonal? Um, maybe. I think we, you... we, we always, for all of these, we always have the uh, option and maybe need to amend that with additional control plane information. No, the idea was uh, the packet carries an indicator. So maybe it falls into the first bullet. It's implicit, so the indicator is in the packet, but the auxiliary data is not in the packet. It's in the control plane. Uh, I mean, I was are, we, are, are you talking really then about? I mean, oh. so you do that, 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 yeah. sounds, that sounds like per flow control plane, like RSVP. Can be per LSP, you know. Okay. Can be per LSP. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I, I don't have a use case for that. I just spoke loud. No, I mean, we have DeadNet, right? I mean, they, they have a lot of ancillary data uh, that uh, <laughs> needs to get pushed to every node. Um, but uh... so the data, the, the auxiliary data is can be exchanged in the control plane. And if a packet has this indication that, you know, uh, um, you know, process uh you know use that metadata to do something if you have the indication in the packet so Tarek, just to clarify are you talking of kind of configuration you use a control plane to give the node some type of data and yeah i mean maybe it's a qs i'm thinking of it as a qs so qs profile is exchanged in the control plane the qs profile is exchanged in the control plane and then the packet just has an indication that says invoke the profile. So the profile okay. itself is not carried in the packet. Okay, so offhand, I don't want to uh, kind of say that that is something we want to do or we not want to do. Can you write it down and send it to the mailing list? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, thanks. I, 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 I think that would best be, really be described as orthogonal, right? I think that stuff can can be attached to any of the, you know, uh, met, uh, metadata, ancillary data, however it's positioned. Okay. Um, yeah. Whatever. Right. The indicator okay. for additional data can use either of these three methods. The indicator. Or the, the, the ancillary data itself can always be um, a pointer to more data that you got through the control plane. More data. Yeah, it's carried inside the packet. In, in the, so, so, so what you're so, saying right, is, so think about yeah. uh, you know you have an eight bit val or a, a value which is a flow identifier or something like a DSCP uh, value, right? So we can use all three of these types or positions to put it in, and it's always referring to addi additional data learned through the control plane. Yes. So you're agreeing there, right? I'm, I'm I'm saying it's it's a completely separate um, bullet point of saying that any uh, any ancillary data can be you know a pointer to additional control plane learned data. Yeah, uh, the idea of implicit it's a, it's kind of hinting that it, you know somewhere else the uh, the ancillary data is coming from. And I think that's that's, sure. that's where we disagree, right? You're you're always highlighting implicit. I'm saying that um, my you know flow identifier or DSCP or whatever it is that is pointing to the additional data could uh, be after the boss or in stack data wherever I prefer it. I don't think it's tied to the implicit option. So Tardas, again, so we not lose it. Uh, can you kind of write? down a three or four liner that I can use in the in the text. Yeah, I'll not do, do it in the chat. Let me try to do it afterwards. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Send it to the mail list so everyone can see it. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll try to articulate what I said as well. No problem. Maybe I didn't make it clear. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, anything else on this? Uh, 
um, lower if you want to um or we move as on. long as I, as long as i get comments it's fine yeah okay comments you the way you want to collect the comments is via the list uh yeah uh, okay yeah. that's the preferable way okay okay i'll flip to the next uh um, item on the agenda number five so this we uh, we had talked about is uh, we want to discuss what comes out from from this uh, design team. Uh, so we have use case documents. We said that may we may produce new document new use case documents. Uh, um, <clears throat> Or we can reference existing documents. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not sure. Maybe the new documents will be for something that was that does uh, that's not worked on by other working groups, or, you know, maybe network programming related, or, um, I, but for things that are already defined, we will reference, or for things that we have already documents that talk about the use case, we will reference. So we at least have we we need one document. That will reference existing documents. That's what that's what we uh, you know what we agreed on uh, as chairs. So we need a document that uh, talks about the MPLS and uh, data plane uh, implications for these dis different use cases. Do you want to add to this? Uh, uh, I, th I think that I think that what the sentence says is what we intended but it's not saying that precisely it should say it should be an or in there the design team mm -hmm. might produce two types of document first the document that actually is new and ha have new use cases and it could and the design team could also point to use cases produced by other uh, working groups Something like that. Um, we should define it. So the way it is now is we may produce new documents that reference existing use case documents. Uh, uh, yeah, how... okay. It's probably correct. It's just that it's... Uh... Let me look at it and I'll give you a, an idea of what I want to say. But we don't do it now. Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it now. <clears throat> so, me add requirements spec document. So this is the requirements document. Uh, it's clearly that we need the requirements. Uh, what are the requirements on the MPLS data plane? And then uh, we will use that to define the different uh, the, the solution that we want to implement. Uh, uh, and I have a bit of uh, additional information. Uh, I talked to uh, the chairs, and we agreed on that we wanted to ask uh, Matthew Bocci if he wanted to be the editor of this document. And Matthew had uh, agreed to do that. So uh, we will appoint Matthew as the editor for the um, uh, uh, requirement specification. So, so thanks. Uh, I'll, I'll make a start on that and um, probably reach out for some text and, and things to 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 come up with the first draft. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um... Um, I can note your name down. Uh, let me see if I can find this footer here. <laughs> That's not accurate. I, he is accepted.
I think the whole team has to feed back to Matthew and the and you know requirements so that the initial uh, in draft comes out. The two teams, yeah. Matthew. Oh yeah, yeah. So there's some. I think there's some. There's some kind of high level stuff in some of the drafts that are are, that are around at the moment. But I think obviously we need to, um, yeah, come up with some. Some more extensive text. How uh, would you like to collect uh, feedback, uh, Matthew? Um, may maybe during the design team weekly, we will definitely give feedback. But um, offline, uh, do you on you know? Uh, are we going to exchange email on the list, or uh, we can also create a? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm open. How is the preferred way to collect feedback on the requirements? Um, either email me directly or directly or post them to this. Um, I mean, no, normally, kind of the, the, the process for these sort of documents is that it's kind of done, you know, between the editor and people who want to contribute, and and then we'll come up with some kind of draft and and then ask for discussion on the list. I think. No, I, th I think we use any method that gives the right right results. So that's yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's right. It's it's probably better to have a more complete document first before we have a <coughs> discussion about the requirements, um, because some of the context might be missing in in individual requirements posted to the list. So, um, I, I mean, I'm fine with with, with whatever people want to do, but. Uh, I mean, I can, I can set alternatively, I can kind of set up a call um, and we can, we can discuss how to, how to craft the document. Yeah, that's another, uh, I, you know, idea that I, we can leave it open for now and see if there is a need uh, for a separate, um, you know, more frequent call maybe, but I, you know, I'm not sure that, you know, you, we want to do that yet. So. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay. Anything else on the requirements spec document? Okay. The next one we have um, a proposal for a framework document. Mm. I think the I wasn't clear what the framework will, uh, you know. Uh, I think up. the easiest way of describing that now is actually to say that uh, that is uh, the text on indicators and ancillary data and possibly how they are interworking uh, that we are producing now and actually trying to find consensus in the working group. Uh, and then all the um, uh, stuff that we created at the start of the design team, uh, especially by, uh, by Stuart. It should be kind of textified and uh, agreed upon. So, 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 Lo, one of the one of the things that I was thinking about with this is that sometimes there's a rather blurred um, distinction between the, the framework and requirements and architecture, and because framework documents often end up being kind of framework and requirements for protocol specific. You know, they end up specifying a bunch of protocol specific requirements um, or solution requirements. Um, so I, I kind of hear you saying that we should call it this document that is now framework for architecture. Is that right? Maybe, yeah. Okay, let's think about it. But we, we uh, uh, I, I, I'm not sure it matters what we call it at this stage, but the important thing is that we have something that sets the architectural foundation for the detailed solutions that follows that follow. Yeah, yeah, because the framework document, the, the, sorry, the requirements document will probably end up having a bunch of solution or protocol specific requirements in it, and um, unless we're saying that's going to be just high level use case um, requirements, so. Well, I mean, I have I have things like you know, the various frameworks that you and I have worked together on the in the past in mind when I sort of think about it as a as a general concept. Yeah. 
No, I kind of agree. It's just a uh, we we need to cover the architectural aspects of uh, what we're doing. Um, so, if we want to rename the document, it's fine. But uh, we can do that as we go on. Guys, I have to drop off in uh, three minutes. So I, I do want to um, suggest one quick thing for the network slicing document. I mean, the network slicing piece. Could you please add the document in? Uh, I think it's in T's that talks about the need for network slicing as a, uh, for the use case. Uh, because yeah, that sounds a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The actual use case is there. Uh, what yeah. uh, what these yeah. talk about is how to encode it in MPLS. But uh, the actual, if someone wants to understand why we want an ID, a slice ID, uh, they have to read that document. Well, there's no consensus in the IETF about whether we need slice ID in the data plane. So that's a big discussion that has to happen. But I mean, people who want to understand what we're trying to do here uh, are not going to understand it by reading these documents. No. Yeah. That, what, what these three documents here say is uh, how do you encode it in MTLS? But what is a network size and why you want an ID would be in the other document. So that's, yeah, that's, yeah. I, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that if someone wants to understand, they'd have to see that document. So Kiriti, quick question on that. So you say under network slicing, uh, after the black text, we should add something that says uh, a document that gives you a good background for uh, network sli slicing on using the MPLS data plan is found in, and then the, yeah. the document name. Yeah, yeah. Similar okay. to in the time sensitive networking, what you have, uh, which is just off the edge of the screen, um, is um, here's here's the time sensitive ne networking issues. So um, I think uh, we need a sim. I mean, they're, they're, we don't want to produce a document, but if you put a pointer there with the text that you just suggested, I think that would cover it. Yeah, I think that I agree with that, and um, you know, I was thinking this bullet here. Is uh, you know is going to reference those use case documents. So. Sure, but if someone is reading uh, this right here, um, I'm yeah. not the documents, but if they're just reading the <laughs> network slicing piece of the MIAD specification, then they'll say, okay, what is this network slicing, and why do we want uh, an a something in the data plane? So, yeah, yeah, you don't have to do it now, but okay, I'm gonna drop. Um, sorry, guys, I will talk to you next week. I understand that Stuart is dropping off also. Yeah, that's probably right now. Oh, he's already he's gone. Said, yeah, he said he'd do it silently, but uh, that's on my yeah. All right, I'll see you guys. Okay, good. So we have things that we need to add to uh, this text here, and then we decide where it actually goes. Yeah, I think it's a, a good pointer to, uh, to a good document in ITF network slicing mm -hmm. uh, would be helpful for people. Yep. Yeah, we we can provide that. Mm -hmm. So there mm -hmm. are different categories here. Uh, I think this last category we jumped to it. Uh, um it was meant to to group the existing solutions that are in mpls working group um there are multiple uh drafts that are proposing to extend mpls data plane to support you know carrying ids and uh, uh for network slicing uh, so these are the different drafts <clears throat> uh, in the time sensitive networking there is one draft that talked about using MPLS labels in the label stack. Uh, it wasn't addressed to MPLS like, working group, but uh, eventually if you're gonna change the, 
you know, if you're going to put some timestamps in the label, then you have to. Uh, and there is the in situ OEM draft we know about. Uh, the last two categories we don't have uh, any draft in the working group, but <coughs> you know, they're listed there. Um, yeah, for the network surf service functioning uh, chaining, uh, there was a expired draft uh, by Andrew Mattis, uh actually proposing to include the NSH uh, in the uh, after label stack and indicated by a special label uh, in the NPS label stack. So there's something related related to this. Yeah, I, I, I personally talking, I would like to see it revived and revived interest in this area before we list an expired draft. It's just yeah. uh, make you aware of that. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Hoyu. Yeah. If there is interest in the working group to work on that, then you know we can refresh it and then add it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Anything else you want to add? Uh... Low on this uh, last. Oh, item. I think it's fine. Uh, you... Uh, one one thing I like to add to the um, use cases is that uh, um, there's a currently the discussion in ITF um, to start the work on the application aware network APN, and uh, for that is um, uh, we'll define a set of uh, attributes. Um, so so for to 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 in, to support that in MPS, uh, we would pretty much. Uh, um, Need some uh, actual header to to hold those um, attributes, so that could be a, a use case here. Yeah, I'm not sure. Like the the buff did not uh, it, it had an action item to follow up for the yeah, APN. but but there are already a lot of um, 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 uh, drops uh, there around, right? Uh, discussing all yeah, the but use there cases was a big and, discussion uh, that's the, is the existing technologies uh, can serve the purpose and we don't need to do any extensions. There were some action items uh, taken during the buff. So if the, if the existing technologies do the job, then then why extend MPLS data plane? Um, particularly, I, I don't think in MPLS there's something uh, um, equivalent available. Um, for example, they, they said they might say, okay, um, in uh, IPv6, it was probably the flow label can do, but but in MPS um, was a equivalent thing to support that. It's not clear. So if you want to um, provide such, such a, you know capabilities, um, you know I, I don't know what kind of other attributes are actually required. So then. Just for this big concept, I think there's need something to support it in MPS. No, I, I yeah, I, you know, before listing it as a use case, I would like to see that you know uh, the APN uh, is bringing in something new to uh, to IETF, and that was not agreed in the ball. That that is um, possibly true, though I'm not that concerned about that, but I would actually like to see documents that actually proposes this to be done, changes to the MPLS data plane to be done in the MPLS working group. Mm. That yeah. is kind of the criteria when we start listing things there. Agreed, yeah. We, we did not see any, correct, in MPLS working group. Yeah, well, I think that um, the use cases can perfectly well be developed elsewhere, right? And uh, I think that's that's where the starting point seems to be asked for, right? To provide more uh, use cases, giving the more complex examples where existing options seem to be insufficient. Yeah, we had a use case document here. Uh, no, no, I was I mean, talking it... about I was talking about the APN. Right, that the APN, I think, when I remember the the meeting correctly, was asked to provide 
more explicit use case example to justify the need to have a new um, header um, to support it. Yes. And so they, they're coming up, uh, there will be a new use case document. Is that what an API? I, I don't know if that, that was my personal interpretation. I was just listening. I'm not actively involved in the effort. So, but given how the, um, uh, the MPLS, you know, open design team would probably be very interested to see use cases uh, that would justify the work that we're trying to do here. Maybe there, there is a, uh, you know, a possible interest in collaboration. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I would like to, at least in, <clears throat> there is a use case wiki that we have for the open design team. And currently APN is not listed there. So why you, if you think it's one use case that the open design team should be interested in, maybe we should add it at the end here and then describe how it relates. And let's start it from here, you know, before we list, uh, uh, I think it's good to have it there and then we talk about it. Yeah, okay. I, I, I will try to add a few uh, lines here to explain it. Yes. Yeah. We we can add APN and uh, after that. Uh, hi, Tariq. Oh. Yeah, hi. Yeah. One comment about uh, network slicing. Uh, you mentioned that reference to ITM network slicing definition draft. Well, actually, if we want to introduce a slice ID draft, which mentions this in the TS working group, is the VTN scalability draft. Maybe we can also yeah. have a reference to that one. Yeah, we have multiple actually. Best bar draft also talks about a slice aggregate ID, not slice ID, slice aggregate ID. And uh, we, we have the new uh, term, maybe you will need it. <laughs> yeah, that, the point is, I did not want to go into that uh, debate. So I added this, uh, you know, definitions draft. Yeah, but the definition draft does not mention this uh, data plane extension as a requirement. So, he, 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 if I understand you correctly, you are happy with what, the, what we say now. We need a reference to the uh, definitions draft, but you want to have a, a reference to something else or something more. Yeah, because the definition draft uh, does not provide this uh, background for this kind of extension, in my understanding. Okay. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, it, it talks high level. The realization is left uh, out in here. So uh, I agree that the data plane requirement or the, uh, is not stated in the definition of the draft. Uh, but if I am, you know, to list one, uh, the example that you gave G, then I have to list other examples as well. Uh, so, we can definitely add all the examples. That's what I mean. So, Tarek, wait, listing them here, but actually make sure that they actually are listed in the uh, in the wiki. No, no. Uh, uh, which wiki? Which wiki? The um, use case wiki. No, these are not use cases. The, these are references to T's working group documents, uh, work, working group documents that are not MPLS. Uh, that talk about carrying an ID in MPLS. Uh, but there, there are MPLS working group documents, these drafts, you know, on how to carry the ID and why to carry the ID was mentioned in, in T's working group document. Uh, so the, yeah, we, we can ref, we can refer, reference them here, or we can put them in the use case, the wiki as well. Yeah, sure. I thought we did. Yeah, we don't have references here. We can add them here as well. Yeah, so my rationale to do that is that we is a little bit more relaxed and more we put in here uh, in the uh, use case wiki. And actually, then we can uh, decide what goes on to what 
we actually work on. Yeah, I, I, I like this proposal. Are you okay with that, Jay? Yeah, that okay. would be good. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. I did take a note of a card. Let me see if I. Okay. I don't think I have anything else on the agenda. That was the last thing. Any other business sure, sure. that we have to talk about? I was uh, just wondering how, how many of you have um, kind of followed a little bit what happens in six men with the hop by hop options and, you know, um, if, if there is anything we can learn for what we're doing. So for me, the, the biggest thing seems to be the, the possible difference between, you know, being fully intra-domain versus inter-domain. Uh, so, you know, as long as we don't start talking about inter-domain, we're probably are on a much safer space. But and an easier space, but uh, yeah, I I wonder about what what happens if somebody brings CSC in here uh, into this discussion. So that's uh, just curious. I think that's a good point. Uh, I mean, mo most of these use cases, like network slicing, uh, spans multiple domains. Uh, but I'm not sure about you know maybe IOEM as well. It's a path into domain. So whatever mechanism we we propose uh, extended headers or whatever. Um, I think it should be applicable to inter-domain, but. Um, I, I just, I just. Uh, Tarek, uh, to the best of my understanding, IAM is not inter-domain. Um, so it was discussed because uh, the document IAM data, uh, which is an ISG review uh, still so it talks about uh, IAM domain, and that's understood as a single administrative domain within single administrative domain. So I think that uh, there is no uh, concern for interdomain uh, IAM crossing uh, domain boundaries. So, uh, can we be more accurate? Is it a single carrier multi-domain or multi-carrier is the issue? The multi carrier um, case. Yes, uh, multi carrier, but I think that if we talk about a uh, different data plane, uh, there's no expectation of um, IAM crossing from, let's say, IP to um, MPLS because that would be a different IAM domain. So uh, there, there are Proposals to do REM on uh, different encapsulations, uh, uh, beer, uh, NSH, um, and so on, but no consideration been given for like what you have if you're doing uh, uh, stitching. Uh, okay, I understand, but but is it? The single carrier multi-domain case is in scope, right? Um, that's a good question. It's not being explicitly uh, called out to the best of my understanding. I'm, I find it hard uh, because the single carrier might divide the network to multiple domains and I'm not sure how. True, but uh, the expectation uh, is that uh, the data plane um, defines the domain. So if, uh, for example, uh, operator has, uses uh, MPLS domain and IPv6 domain, then that would be uh, viewed as a two separate IAM domains. Oh, uh, I see. Uh, so precisely. And if we look from uh, the way how it is used in practice, there is no such need. In theory, it looks nice. 
in practice, if you try to combine different data plane technologies with different data plane instances and try to use something uh, along the lines of IOM as an example end to end, it's far more complex than solving this problem in a separate domain and using the manageability systems to correlate that data. It's just not practical. He, yeah, I understand yeah. from what Greg said, you know, the domain, the definition of a domain, and it, it, it's different than, you know, like multi, different people might interpret it differently. The way you are defining domain is a data plane domain. <laughs> um, uh, generalizing, yes. Uh, and it might be even the sub data plane domains, uh, say, among a subset of elements. Uh, where that is needed. The fact that you can do something doesn't necessarily mean that it should be done in practice. But let me let me get to an example from my side of the work because world well, because it just I, I see it just so you know Yakov's um, SRT assessment, right. So imagine you have a broadband edge network um, where you're running um, some five G service over it that wants to use this, right. So the uh, the, the um, PSN service. And so then the question really is: Is this all a single provider? Because today it's it's very common that you know the transport network and whoever runs the virtual machines that are you know implementing the four, five, six G functionality are two different operators, right? And and one might be the originator of 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 these you know five G packets with an SR, um, you know label stack with TSN information and that goes through different providers, uh, you know, transport network. So that that th those are the type of things I'm, I'm starting to worry about that we really for the use case that we have should really understand whether everything is a single administrative entity, including whoever originates the MPLS packets or not. So, uh, this is just a concept of layering uh, um, equivalent to what is used in the Ethernet world. Uh, so, 1731 management domains, right? You have different scopes of visibility from endpoint to endpoint between the midpoints and different levels of midpoints. Exactly same here. Uh, you might have certain visibility end to end service wise, you have certain level of visibility transport wise end to end and different sub layers of transport wise. This, uh, uh, I, I cannot see anything, uh, say, blocking the use of what we have been using for the last several decades here with this architecture. No, no but I think it is uh, historically. Um predominantly that, uh, you know, the source of MPLS packets was in the same trust domain as the transit nodes, right? The PNP. So, so that was one visibility and one trust domain. And I think the more uh, we're evolving, the more that may not be true. And then um, we'll wake up and figure out that some of our assumptions um, of why we could have kept things simple do not apply anymore because we are not the same trust domain anymore. And the MPLS packets that are sourced by a VM of a customer, like a 5G network operator with virtual machines, need to be you know, subject to additional validation in the forwarding plane before we can pass it on. Uh, and how is that different to what we have been doing uh, today and, and several decades before? So the, the traditional CSC, for example, does exactly a strict layering, and there is, uh, you know, very little that you know, ex except for tunneling, happens as a service, right? So I mean that CSC was pretty much MPLS tunneling as a service. Now, if we're talking about more interesting interactions hop by hop with the provider network, like we would have in the TSN or maybe any other. Uh, use cases where the ancillary data does something in the underlying transport, then we certainly will have the need for more extensive edge data plane policing. Uh, precisely, and this is the concept of the uh, well subdomain subdomain partitioning. Oh yeah, uh, concept wise, we we had that forever. I'm just saying, practically speaking, we didn't have, I think, widespread deployment uh, and experience with it yet. 
Uh, widespread, I would agree, yes. Uh, this is probably a question of time, but this doesn't look, um, say, radically different uh, than, than the, um, say, usual deployment models. Um, what is different is that your data plane domain is no longer congruent with your trust domain. Yeah, yeah, and I think the the the, the to me the the big question is really the you know um, ability for any type of advanced packet information to be all not, not not only well you know processed hop by hop once you trust it, but also what are the data plane functions we need to be able to trust it. Right. I did capture some of the discussion. This is where this was very good feedback, Torlis. Um I think uh, it's good to uh, keep it. Um, uh, well, I, I think, think you know before we get to all these these details, you're trying to make points to. I think the the main point is for the use cases to consider the simple thing that you know the originator of the MPLS packet with all the additional stuff we want to put in there um, may not be trusted by by the transit, right? By 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 the following hops. So we need to have a trust function on on an ingress. Yeah, uh, within one operator uh, network, does trust uh, is satisfied? Yeah, that, that's what yeah. I'm saying in terms of I wouldn't even go into the details if it is, you know, from a customer uh, who is sending MPLS packets or whether it's between different domains of the same operator or inter provider. I'm just talking about looking at. Um, what would be the type of trust function in the forwarding plane that we want to have, right? So, for example, in IPv6 or IPv4, it was kind of the stupid drop the whole packet, right, if you don't trust it. But in something like um, uh, the um, DeadNet case, I could easily see that you're just limiting parameter spaces, for example, right? So, the the there might be something that says, oh, I want to have this bandwidth or this latency, and you're just cutting off the values to 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 some maximum that you're allowing, right? Which is a much more um you know uh, non-error introducing uh, option, right? So these these type of things um, might result in more policing functions than we have done in the past, right? Just you know, drop an error is the only thing we've mostly done. With this ancillary data with these functions, right? So I think the question to everybody providing these these proposals for ancillary stuff is what is the the trust function we want to have on ingress? Right? You know, match and uh, either accept and drop or something beyond that. Yeah, if, if the trust is not established, I think an action would be defined, but but should any, I mean, how do you establish trust is another thing is, uh, you know, should you do our, you know, reverse path check or like, uh, how? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Right. So I mean, how, how, how are you validating the trust and what are the, the output of the trust, right? Just, you know, forward unmodified or, um, you know, discard or something more advanced. So the ingress trust function, right? So everybody who has proposals specifically, you know, should maybe start thinking about um, if there is anything in that new stuff that would require new type of trust functions, because yeah, as you said, the standard stuff that we have is to just you know check from this input we do accept this and this and that. So reasonable. Uh, to, to I just think that um, uh, the reverse path uh, check uh, in the path engineering environment. Uh, might produce uh, unpredictable results. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wasn't specifically talking to that. I, I typically, you know, just remember that the most important part was, you know, a particular receiving port is associated with a particular subscriber profile, 
and that means the following filtering will be applied. Um, reverse path sounds like, uh, is that even done in MPLS? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. If you have bidirectional LSP, it would be easy, but yeah. LSPs are unidirectional. Just, just as a bucket item, right? Ingress uh, trust function, kind of as 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 an open working item when we get further along. Okay. Uh, I think we are almost out of time. Uh, that's a good feedback towards the end. Anything else we want to discuss before we adjourn today? Um, we have a couple of follow-up action items, so uh, I'll be sending an email, um, at least on mine. Um, all right. Let me submit this and save it. Uh, Loa, do you want to uh, add anything before we adjourn today? No, I, I think I'm fine. I okay. heard what I wanted to hear and I know what to do. 